September the 21st, 2016. My name is Tanya Fincham. I'm with Oklahoma State University uh, Library, and I'm in McIntosh County in the town of Eufaula to speak with Melanie Taylor. And this is part of our Cowboys in Every County project. So thank you for talking with me today. Let's begin with having you tell us when and where you were born. Okay. Do I have to take my birthday? <laughs> not, not if you don't want Okay. To. I was born in 1971. I'm about 30 miles south of here in McAllister, Oklahoma, in Pittsburgh County. Okay. And what did your parents do for a living? Um, my dad was, an, well, he was an ag teacher when I was born, an FFA teacher. Um, and then he actually went into extension later, and he retired from OSU Extension in uh, 2003. And my mom has worked for numerous offices in the courthouse. Um, she worked for the county assessor's office, county clerk's office, and things like that. But she retired a couple of years ago. Very civic woman. Yes. I should back up and say you're the director of McIntosh County. Yes, I'm the county extension director. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what, do you have a couple of other titles along with that? Um, family and Consumer Sciences and 4-H Educator. So I do programs in the home ec based programs, family and consumer science type things, um, parenting, character education, nutrition, and things like that. And then I also help oversee the 4-H program and all of our livestock shows and 4-H events. Your plate is pretty full. Pretty full. <laughs> <laughs> Especially this time of the year. Yes, fair time is crazy time. <laughs> Well, growing up, were you in 4-H? Yes, I was. I started, I actually started showing livestock. My dad uh, had a Simmental ranch, my, and my grandparents, and I started showing livestock when I was about six or seven. My first show was at Fort Worth. I had a couple of huge Simmental heifers that I showed at Fort Worth when I was seven, um, and then I joined 4-H just as soon as I could when I was nine, and I showed the entire time until I graduated. Mm -hmm. Do you have brothers and sisters? Um, I have a half-brother and a half-sister. My mom and dad divorced when I was four. Um, both remarried within about a month of each other when I was six. And then within about six months, about a year and a half later, I got a brother and a sister. <laughs> One <laughs> at each household. So, <laughs> Are they both involved with... They were. They were both involved with 4-H and showed. Uh, my uh, brother is actu was actually a state 4-H officer. Um, he graduated in 1999, so I guess he was a state 4-H officer in 98 and 99. Wow, so it runs in the family. Yes, it does. Where did you go to elementary school? I actually went to school here in Eufaula. When my parents divorced, my dad moved down toward um, Clinton, the Kenna area, um, and he was uh, worked for Extension in Haskell County and then retired from LaFleur County in Poto. But I lived in Eufaula with my mom and went to school here. Mm -hmm. I started kindergarten in Eufaula and I graduated in Eufaula. Were all 12 grades in the same building? No, no. There were three elementary schools and then a junior high and a high school. So there's actually five schools at the time. What was the name of the elementary? Um, Dixie Elementary was kindergarten through second. Mm -hmm. um, third and fourth was at Jefferson Davis. Fifth and sixth at Cooper McLean. Seventh, eighth, and ninth at the junior high. And then uh, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth were actually the only grades. The freshmen stayed at the junior high, and then tenth, eleventh, and twelfth was at the high school. A lot of different schools. A lot of different schools every couple Not of years. you moved, though. <laughs> no, no, just lots of schools. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you have a favorite subject going through? Um, not really. I kind of liked all of them. Um, I actually, even though I am a home economist, I never actually took home ec in high school. Um, I tried to do some college prep work, and I did a lot of calculus and trig and um, physics and things like that instead. I've always been interested in science, not terribly great at it, but math was probably my worst subject. I'm still not good with math. <laughs> <laughs> so what year did you graduate? I graduated in 89. 89. Mm -hmm. And you were in 4-H at that point? Point two. Did you do yes. any have any other activities outside of? Um, yeah, I was in band for a. I guess I started in fifth grade and I quit. I marched a couple of years, so I quit about my freshman year. Um, I played softball for one year, and then I mainly rode the bench and played basketball. I was not terribly good or coordinated, but I tried. So I did play basketball a little in high school. But um, I was on the student council and I was a, a, a class officer all the way through high school and and more leadership type things like that. I'm not terribly athletic. <laughs> What's the mascot here? It's the iron head. Look, okay. looks like kind of like a Trojan head. Okay, I saw that, but I wasn't quite uh -huh. sure. Called it. iron heads. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What instrument did you play? I played flute. And you didn't want to continue that on into? No. Didn't like the marching part? No, huh? I kind of got tired of it. Burning up in the uniform. Yes, it was awful. <laughs> 
Well, if your grandparents had a farm, uh -huh. would you have to go on weekends or business? Yeah, I went, I went to my dad's on the weekends, and he lives probably less than half a mile from where my grandparents lived. And so um, I spent most of the weekends on the farm. What would be some of the things you would do there? Oh, gosh. Lots of different things. Mainly to help take care of the animals, rode lots of four-wheelers. Um, they live kind of in a, well, they do live in a valley. It's called Lona Valley down between Clinton and Kenna. And um, so lots of hills that we would ride up and down in four-wheelers and stuff. We would do um, hay rides in the fall with all my friends from down there and sleep. I had sleepovers because I didn't get to see them, but, you know, two weekends a month. Mm -hmm. So I usually had a friend at Dad's from the time I got there to the time I left pretty much. And the, the farm house, was it an older farmhouse? No, actually they had, had pretty much rebuilt. They, uh, I remember the old farmhouse, but I remember it probably when I was four or five, six years old, and they slowly started transforming it, and now it looks, you wouldn't know that there was ever actually the shell of a farmhouse there. It's mm -hmm. completely new and brick and, you know, metal roof and all of that. Just it's kind of come about. So by the time you were born, they already had electricity and running water yes. and indoor plumbing and all yes. that good stuff. Yeah. Well, did they have chickens? No. No, no. we never had any chickens. We I did um, have some rabbits that I showed a little bit. And then I showed, um, I never actually showed goat. That was about the only thing I didn't show. I showed um, sheep for a couple of years. I showed my big Simmental heifers straight through. And then I wanted to try hogs for a couple of years. So I showed hogs for three or four years probably too. Win any ribbons? Oh, yeah, lots. I still have boxes and boxes of trophies, and one of the parents, our 4-H parents and I were talking at the fair last week about what to do with all of these ribbons that we want, and I told her that I still have, like, king-size comforter bags full of ribbons from 30-some-odd years ago when I was in 4-H, so lots and lots of stuff. So them together and make a quilt? Well, we actually, but the reason we were talking about it, her daughter sewed, it together, sewed hers together and made a pillow. It's here somewhere. <laughs> Well, did your mother or your grandmother quilt? Um, one of my grandmothers, my stepdad's mom, I remember the old quilt rack hanging from the ceiling that they would lower down. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a huge living room, almost probably the size of this conference room. And my grandmother and both of her sisters and a couple of my um, grandfather's sisters would sit around all the way around this quilt rack that lowered from the ceiling and quilt on weekends. And you stuff. can remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a big deal that when grandma gave you a quilt for Christmas, she tried to make one for all the grandkids every four or five years so that if your your theme was strawberry shortcake or, you know, something little kiddish, once you grew up a little bit, she'd make you a new one. So it was what, always special. What was yours? Um, let's see. I had a Scooby-Doo one. <laughs> and I guess I was probably about six or seven when Star Wars came out, the first Star Wars. And... Um, so she made me a Star Wars one that I think actually had maybe some glow-in-the-dark material or something with it and stuff. Um, and then I had she made me for my, um, when I got married in, uh, let's see, 1990, I was 19, she made me a double wedding ring. Oh, but that's pretty. It's beautiful. Well, they probably all are, but that's yes, probably the Yes, that's probably the most piece. special, yeah. Did you, would she hand quilt while she yes. does? She did, 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 yes. And hand piece? Yes, all of her stuff wow. was all hand done. Where would she have to go to get her fabric? Um, probably, we bought her a lot of the stuff. She didn't travel a whole lot, um, but we would get it in Muskogee or McAllister or something at, at Walmart. And um, there was a Hancock Fabrics that just went out of business at Muskogee mm -hmm. that we got her stuff from. And then she did lots and lots of embroidery. I remember going and, and buying her huge bags of embroidery floss and stuff. She embroidered pillowcases and tea towels and anything she could get a hold of. And how, had she grown up in McIntosh yes. County? So she, was she born? I'm not I'm honestly really sure where she was born, but they lived about 10 miles west of Eufaula here. Um, and they all kind of stayed right there at, at one spot. And there was an old one-room schoolhouse that they bought when it quit being used. And that's the community center kind of for my whole, that whole side of the family. That's where we have all of our family reunions and family Christmases and stuff is in that old one-room schoolhouse. Oh, that's neat, too. Yeah, it's a very neat building, old rock building. So they would have been here when the lake was, when the dam was done and the lake um, was yes, filling um, up. I'm whatever. sure they were. And I'm sure they were. Yeah. And such. She passed away in 2011, and she was 92. I think the lake, the dam was finished like mid 60s. Yeah, so yeah, she was here then. And my parents were born in the 40s and 50s, so they were here too. 
I just wondered if you'd heard any stories about when they were doing all of that. Not really. Whether the locals were for it or, or not. No, or not really. Um, I, my dad, I, don't, I was, grew up down around, actually both my parents grew up down around Quentin and Kenna and stuff, and then my mom moved here after their divorce. So they weren't actually over in this area, but my grandparents okay. were, but I don't guess I've ever heard them say anything about it. They must have not lost too much bottom land or no, farmer probably not or that. They live quite a ways west of town and from the lake. And they were dairy farmers. No, okay. no, they they had cattle but not dairy farmers. I had read that the in the sixties or before it was cotton and corn. Probably yes. Around the here, probably. and then the lake changed. Yeah, that. changed what you could grow and how much space you had to grow it. Oh, well, what was your follow like when you were you know in your growing up years? Probably typical small town Oklahoma. Um, not a lot to do. Kids, you know, entertain themselves. A um, lot of there. There's a lot more for kids now. I see having kids. Um, there's soccer league and there's little league and t-ball and little league football and I don't remember ever having any of that when I was younger. Um, but you know, once we got to where we had a friend with the driver's license, we drug main every Friday and Saturday night from the Sonic and around past the Tasty Freeze and back. It was the same loop over and over. People would park in the grocery store parking lot and sit on the tailgates of their truck, you know, and yell at people going by. Probably very redneck, but just small town Oklahoma, that's what you do. So there was a Sonic at that time. There was a Sonic. There was a Sonic. It's since moved in a much nicer location, and they just tore down the the old location where it was when I was in high school. And is the dairy the dairy one still there? Uh, the Tasty Freeze it is now. It's actually called Flavors Grill, but it's still there. It's changed. Yeah, it. It's changed owners and names a dozen times since it was Tasty Freeze, but yeah, it's still there. I remember Tasty Freeze in yeah. other places. Yeah, my grandmother actually worked at Tasty Freeze, the one that quilted for years and years. She and my aunt Shorty, who is. Gosh, she's probably 90 now, too. Shorty, I'm assuming. It's Bernice, Bernice, yes. She's about four, four foot seven. <laughs> and then she's okay with being called yeah. Shorty? Yeah, has her whole life. <laughs> well, did you fall? I have a movie theater. They did at one time. It was just a single screen. Um, it was between them where the bank and the fabric. Well, it's not a fabric shop anymore. It's a tea room. Um, but it, it's now a parking lot next to the bank. They bought it and tore it down years ago. Um, I remember seeing movies there probably. My dad used to take me to Saturday or Sunday afternoon matinees when he had me on the weekend some. Um, probably right after my parents divorced. So maybe I was five or six years old. I remember seeing the Apple Dumpling Gang there. That's one of the first movies I remember actually seeing there. But yeah, they did. They don't anymore. They have it in years. Bowling alley or skating alley? They had a bowling alley out on Texana Road, which is six miles north of town. Um, but it burned down. I guess when I was in high school, probably, and they never rebuilt. So, Shakota, 14 miles is the closest one. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. You no, know, and with the lake being so close, did you do it, have activities fishing or whatever? Yeah, lots of fishing, lots of um, beach volleyball, and you know, parties on the beach, bonfires, and things like that, and going and laying out and swimming on over at the cove, which is the big hangout for teenagers. There's a beach volleyball nets and a big pavilion with picnic tables and things like that. So, yeah, lots of lake activities in the summer. And sunscreen? Or not, yes, or not. yes, definitely, yes. definitely. <laughs> I have two shades, white and red, so oh. no in-between, really. So, unfortunately, my kids are the same way. So, so learning to swim was... Uh, I actually awkward. don't know how to swim. I did more of the laying out, the beach volleyball and stuff. My husband shames me all the time because I don't know how to swim, and he is... An avid swimmer, fisherman, that wants a, you know, we had, at one point we had a pontoon boat and a bass boat and some other kind of boat. And um, so he wants to be on the water all the time, tubing, and scares me to death. I just, I love watching the water. I love looking out at the lake, but I don't want to be in it much. <laughs> Wear your life jacket. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now there's things that move in the lake. Yes. Yeah, I don't want anything moving past my feet in this lake either. <laughs> All right, so you, you said you got married at 19? I did the first pretty, time. Pretty soon after high school. It was, um, yes, it was after my first year of college. 
And where was your first year at LSU? It was at Eastern, at Wilburton, Eastern Oklahoma State. Okay, let's start there then. So okay. after your high school, then what? Um, I went to Eastern Oklahoma State. I started actually just two or three weeks after I graduated from high school. I went the summer right after I graduated and took six hours and got a work-study job on campus and, and went ahead. And uh, I lived with my my dad and my stepmom in Quentin then, which was only about 20 miles to Wilburton that summer. And I commuted back and forth and took classes, and that's when I met my first husband. Um, and I finished Eastern in a year and a half. We got married about halfway through my time at Eastern when I was 19. So. A year and a half, so you got an associate? I got an associate's degree in business administration and accounting. And business. And then? Then um, in December of 1990, we moved to um, OSU, moved to Stillwater. Oh, as a married couple. You yes, know, moved. yes. And the reason being, was he gone or you gone or what was um, it? Oh, what took you to Stillwater? That was what my family expected. That's where my whole family went to school. That's where my grandpa went. That's where my dad, I mean, we truly did bleed orange and black. <laughs> um, I I never thought of going anywhere else, to be honest with you. I applied to a few different ones, and I got accepted to Stanford, and I got accepted to Baylor, and they both had really good business schools, but I I just couldn't be that far from home, and it was just expected in my family. You go to OSU, so I went to OSU. <laughs> and your granddad had? Yes. What, do you have any idea when he might have graduated? Um, no, he was born in 1925. Let's see, and my dad was born in 48. Probably he would have finished there about the time my dad was born. So yeah, after the war, he may have, yes. he may have used he was in the war, yeah. So he may have used the GI Bill. Yes, probably that. so. And then my dad, um, he graduated from high school in 66 and went to Vietnam mm -hmm. in 68 and came back in 70 and married my mom. And about 10 months later, here I came. So. And he went. Yes. Uh, how was, or did they do business or ag? Ag. Or what? Both of ag. Yeah. My dad was ag ed, and he was an FFA instructor, an ag instructor. Um, he actually, I know that he um, he did his internship and his student teaching at Leedy, way out in western Oklahoma somewhere. I've never actually been to Leedy, but that's where he did his teaching at. And then he moved back to this area, and he taught at Oktaha, which is about 25 miles north. Then moved to Shakota, which is 14 miles north, and then moved here. So he just progressively moved south. Um, until he uh, left the school here at Eufaula in, I believe, 1979, because my brother was born in 80, and he was working at Stigler at Haskell County for the extension service then. And he's retired now. He's yes. Needs, yeah. He moved um, from Haskell County to LaFleur County in 1995, and then retired in 2003. So when you were at, at OSU, where did you live? I lived on 620 South Walnut Street. <laughs> Right over by us, the Stillwater Medical Center, the hospital, okay. just off of Sixth Street on Walnut, two houses, two houses there. So you could walk to campus. Or? I could. It would have been a long walk, and I wasn't that ambitious. I usually rode my bike. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. Fine. And your your was business. You said um, I actually was hotel. I majored in hotel and restaurant administration. Somewhat business. Yes. Yeah. Well, how did you get from that to extension? It's funny, isn't it? Um, I really did. I love the hotel restaurant business. I loved the glamour of it and the thought of, I think my dad and I both had stars in our eyes and I was going to manage the, uh, you know, Hilton Honolulu or Waikiki Beach or something and they were going to come and vacation for free and I was going to live in paradise and I got married and we talked about having kids and that just didn't happen and I moved to Tulsa and went to work for Doubletree and I think I just didn't really realize that the hotel industry is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You don't shut down a hotel on Christmas Day or New Year's or your kid's birthdays or anything, and it just got to be too much for me. And um, this position opened up, and I was looking to get out of the hotel restaurant business and um, kind of the rat race, and I had a home act-based degree, and I had actually thought about going into education the entire time since my dad was an ag teacher for a while. Um, and so when this opened up and I could actually teach people and educate people, but it was home ag based, which was kind of what my degree was in. I had had a lot of nutrition classes and food prep classes and things like that for the hotel restaurant degree. I thought it was a perfect fit. It was a little more regular hours, not so much this time of year, but 
So it was just better for my family. And what year was that when you came? I started in two th October of 2000. I actually started on Halloween in 2000. So I'm coming up on my 16th oh, wow. anniversary. So who was your favorite teacher? Do you remember from OSU? Oh, and goodness. I don't, I don't know many of them. There but. were a lot of them that I really did enjoy. Um, I had Dr. Manzer, Lee Manzer, in the business department that I really enjoyed his classes. Um, as far as hotel restaurant goes, um, Dr. Bacorny was my advisor, Baker Bacorny, and he was wonderful. Um, Sylvia Geico was one of my instructors. I love Gerald Leong. He was my quantity food prep teacher and he is still there and still in the hotel restaurant department. And he actually spoke at a conference I was at this summer. So it was kind of neat to see him 23 years later. <laughs> but there were lots of really good instructors. Dr. Knight, Sue Knight, had her for a lot of nutrition classes. Mm -hmm. She was head of the nutrition department when I was there and she was an excellent instructor. Did any of them, any of the classes about each or Eat your dinner, as they said. Definitely, definitely. Um, we had some dining room management, and I don't know if you've eaten at Taylor's on campus. Mm -hmm. um, and then we managed the Big Eight and some of the fast food restaurant management classes and things. And you don't really realize how much it goes into purchasing and, and predicting how many people you're going to have and, and looking at, you know, when you're busiest and what you're using most of and, and planning meals that satisfy a variety of people and putting together a menu and quantity food preparation and dining room management just about got me. <laughs> you might have to use a little bit of math in that. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do and that may be why. <laughs> yes, that may be why. <laughs> I really enjoyed the nutrition classes probably and maybe that's because I teach nutrition now and I, I kind of appreciate them more and the importance I felt like they have to people mm -hmm. to know what they're putting in their body and what they're eating and how to help have that diet help keep them healthy. So what year did you graduate? I graduated in 93. May of 93. And did you spend much time in the library? Um, quite a bit. Um, yeah. Do you have a favorite spot? So, you know, I don't really remember. Enough. It's... No. Well, it's but changed I, a lot. So. I do remember I went to a football game one time there, and um, I'd forgotten my student ID. I was getting in with a student ticket, and I, the guy didn't want to let me in, and he said, I'll tell you what, I believe you're a student if you can tell me the name of the library. And I said, Edmund Lowe, and he said, seriously, I didn't know that. I said, then how are you going to know if I knew it or not? But he let me in. So. <laughs> I don't think most students would know. Yeah, I don't know. Even though it's on the side of the building. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. And it's L O W. Yes. And no one's missing a D. Yes. A lot of people want to put Edmund on, yeah. on there. And I said Edmund Lowe, and he was like, Really? I did not know that. So I don't know why I ask, but. Spend much time in the student union? Lots of time in the student union. I actually worked at the student union hotel hmm. most of the time I was there. I did a work study um, job for a year when I first got there for the 4 H office, state 4 H office. Um, since I'd come from such a 4-H background and we knew lots of people there, that was my choice of work study. But when my work study ran out, I went to work more in my field, what I was going into, and I worked at the Student Union Hotel for the rest of my time there. Remember any, any infamous or famous oh, customers that came lots, Not real. I don't want to say they're not famous, but just most of the athletes, the people we were recruiting at the time, Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders, and you know, a lot of them came through there. Um, they were actually had already graduated, but they were coming back for homecomings and um, autograph signings and things like that. One year I got, uh, had Thurman Thomas autograph my little brother. Uh, football, and that's well, still probably one of his most prized possessions. It just happened to be because I was working when he came to check in. <laughs> I wondered if Garth Brooks had ever come through. Not while I was there. He never stayed there if he did. Mm -hmm. they've, they've updated and renovated a couple of times. Yeah. Since, since then. Yes, they have. We st well, Since I worked for OSU and for Extension, we have lots of conferences in the student union up in the Starlight Terrace and those case study rooms, mm -hmm. and so we usually stay there. It's just so convenient to go in and out, you know through the hallways and if, if the weather is bad or anything, you're right there in the same building. So it's really convenient. So you're on campus several um, times a year? Yeah, four or five times a year probably for conferences. Do you have a favorite spot on campus? Oh, not really. I I used to do a lot of studying in the, the breezeway um, between the 
I don't even know what it was called then or what it's called now, the Human Environmental Sciences Building and the HRAD building there. Um, we actually, from one of my design classes, had to design seating and, and flow and decorate the whole inside of it. And it was, it always seemed to be warm and it was always cold in those buildings. So I could sit there and study, get something to eat at the Big Eight. That's when we were the Big Eight, you know, and that was the, the catchy name when we were in the Big Eight conference. But I would get food at the Big Eight and sit out there and study for my afternoon classes and stuff where it was warm where that sun was coming through. So that's probably one of my favorite places or one of the places I remember the most. Well, who are you talking about? And what was your husband doing during this time? Um, he was a chemistry major. So he liked math. He liked math and science more. He didn't finish, but <laughs> <laughs> he quit about um, a semester shy of graduating, actually. It's kind of a challenge, both of you being in yes. at the same time? Yes. Yeah, it was tough. And we weren't independently wealthy. We were poor college students, and so we worked different jobs and different shifts, and I worked during the day because that's when the 4-H office was open, and he would work in the evenings at Rex's Chicken at one point, and then he worked for a kicker at one point um, and helped build um, speaker boxes and things like that and stuff. So he worked in the evenings a lot, and I worked during the day in my work study when I wasn't in class, and so we didn't see each other a whole lot for a couple of years. And you lived in the same place the entire mm -hmm. time you were yes, there? Yes, we sure did. Do you remember graduation day? Um, a little bit. Um, it was stormy. It was rainy. It was awful. Uh, my family didn't realize how many people graduate from OSU, I guess, on any given day. So quite a few of them had not made room reservations. And there were not rooms within an hour of still water. So we actually took mattresses off of beds. And some people slept on mattresses, and some people slept on the box springs in sleeping bags and things the night before my graduation. It's one real restful night. I think I got a box spring and not a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> so where was it? Was it in the Student, Student Union. Union. Oh, graduation, graduation is in Calgary. It was in the mm -hmm. small arena. Yes. Indoors. So if it was yes, storming, it was indoors. So. Yes, it had stormed all night. And, and you say family, who was it? Parents, grandparents? Parents and grandparents and my husband's parents and things like that. I had I had the foresight to get a couple of rooms at the student union since I was working there at the hotel at the time and a couple at Motel 6 out west of town because I had worked there at one point. Um, but we had so much family that just wasn't still enough room. Mm -hmm. And graduation was unbelievably early. I don't even remember what time, but like... 7.30 a.m. or something, because the big main graduation was at 10 or 10.30 that morning. So all the individual colleges, I don't know how I got lucky enough to be in the one that was at 7.30 a.m., but I did. So it was really early. Too early to drive Too over. Too early to drive over, so everybody had to just sleep on the floor or in a chair or wherever. Did you take pictures of three generations then? You know, I don't know if we did or not. No, should be. Or maybe. I know my three. mom's got a picture of me actually walking across the stage still to this day on their TV. But I don't know that we got, I've not seen any or hadn't even thought about it in years of, of who all was there that day. I mean, it would be three though. It would be you, your dad, and your yes. dad. Mm -hmm. And they were all there. Did the wives go to, I mean, had they graduated from OSU too, your dad's? No. And your grandmother? No, my uh, no, my grandmother didn't graduate from college. And my, my dad's wife, my stepmom, grew up in Tennessee. Okay. And um, the, my mom, I don't think she, she I don't know she didn't finish at OSU. She, she did go to OSU, but then she had me and didn't finish. Okay. So did you go to very many sporting events while you were there? Quite a few. Basketball. My yeah. Gosh, we, I, we had season tickets to football all the time. Okay. Um, in the student section. We went to a lot of basketball games. Um, my ex-husband liked uh, baseball quite a bit, so we went to a few baseball games here and there, just whatever was convenient. But yeah, we had, I still enjoy FSU sports whenever I can go. Were they, I don't know my years of, of which years they were winning or mm -hmm. not. Were you, were you there in good years? You know, I went more for the socialization and just the cheering. Watching and the, the crowd. Huh? Yeah, watching the crowd and people watching. And I, I think we had a couple of pretty good years and then maybe one really bad year or so when I was there. So once you graduated, you you went to Tulsa. You yes, we moved to Tulsa and I went straight to work for a Doubletree Hotels. Well, while you were in Stillwater, would you come 
back and forth to McIntosh County. Yeah, I didn't have opportunity to a lot since I did have to work most of the time I was in college. Um, And depending on my class schedule, I couldn't get very many hours during the week. So I worked most weekends. I try to come home on the weekend every fourth or fifth week if I could get a weekend off. Well, do other of your high school classmates go? Um, Do you know if any? You know, a couple of them did go to OSU, but I don't think they graduated from there. I think they went on somewhere else. Um, I do have a friend who was actually at a meeting I hosted last night from Shakota that graduated the same day I did from OSU, and we're still friends. Her kids um, have all graduated. She has three children, and they've all graduated, but they've all been through our 4-H program from the time they turned nine to the time they graduated last year. Hmm. So how many would have been in your high school graduation class? We were one of the biggest high school graduating classes. Actually, I think at the time we were the biggest from Ufala. We started out with like 103 in our class and 96 of us graduated, I think. And that's the big... It was the biggest class, yeah. Oh, it is big. Yeah, and I think my daughter graduated in May and she graduated with... 70, 72, something like that. So we're still one of the biggest classes, I think, that's ever come through. Well, has the population changed that much in your uh, No, not really. Um, and the county population usually holds pretty close between around 19 and 20,000. So Thanks to the lake, I guess. Yeah. Mainly. A lot of older people, a lot of retirees that that come down here, you know, and there's a lot of subdivisions that are not real convenient. You follow that are way out on the lake. They have you follow address, but they may be... 12 or 14 miles out of town. But they retire here and come to town once a week to get their groceries and they fish and they go out on their boats and stuff like that. So we really have quite a bit of an older population in our county. That's where we should probably start too, that once you started working here, mm-hmm. describe a typical day for, for, for you. There's not a typical day in extension. <laughs> It really depends on time of the year. In the summer, we do a lot of stuff with our 4-H kids while they're out of school. Um, We may have a three-day 4-H camp where we come in in the morning and we have them all meet us here and we go to Robbers Cave and we camp for three days and two nights and we do leadership workshops with them that usually includes um, some archery or some type of 4-H shooting sports event and then... um, lots of dances and minute to win it and get acquainted games and things like that with kids. Um, We do what we call Terrific Tuesdays. Every Tuesday during the summer we bring our 4-H kids in and we do day-long workshops with them on Tuesdays to help them get their 4-H projects ready for the fair. We might do woodworking one Tuesday and leather craft the next Tuesday and sewing the next Tuesday or whatever. So we do that during the summer and so that takes up a lot of time. During the school year, I do a lot of in-school programming, um, whether it's character education with Head Starts and kindergartens, pre-Ks and things like that, or nutrition with a little bit older kids, second and third grade. So I might come in and be here for an hour in the morning and then go and rotate 30-minute lessons through four classes of second graders or something until noon or one o'clock. There is no typical day. There's no day alike, really. And do you work with older people, too? Uh-huh. I actually have a program tomorrow um, that's cooking for one or two in your crock pot um, at a retirement community out west of Eufaula here. It's called Lakehurst Senior Living. I mean, I've got 15 signed up for it tomorrow to learn how to kind of scale back when you're used to cooking for a family. Um, and now maybe your spouse has passed on and your kids are gone and you've moved into this community how to either not cook as much or how to properly store it, freeze it and things for later on and batch cook and things like that. So yeah, they'll all be probably in their seventies and eighties. Sounds like you have to be a jack of all trades. Definitely. Have to know how to do all this. Definitely. That's one of the great things about this job. If I get really tired or if I just don't feel like, you know, for a while going into the school system and being in a classroom and in and out of classrooms, for six weeks at a time, I can focus more on a different program that is elderly or that is even younger kids and go into the head starts and do things with them. Or It's kind of pick and choose, and it's great. You can do what you put you love at the time. Kind of flexible. Very flexible. And you're, I'm assuming your OSU training comes, yes. in, comes in handy. Yes, it does. All, this yes, all of that does, and we do a lot of in-service training. They may come up with a new curriculum for us, and we go to Stillwater or Oklahoma City or somewhere for two days training on it. Um, 
one of my favorite programs right now. We are doing a program. It's court mandated now for anyone getting a divorce that has minor children to go through a parenting class on how to help their kids through their divorce um, so that they're not harmed on, you know, going through the whole thing. Um, and it's called Co-Parenting for Resilience. And that's what we want to do. We want to help our kids be resilient even after this because it is life-changing for them. And that's, that's kind of one of my passions right now. Yeah. Been yes, having been divorced, and having kids with my parents are divorced. Um, I am divorced. I have four children. I have two with my first husband and two with my current husband. And seeing the differences in what my older kids went through, shuttling back and forth and packing a bag on you know on the weekend to take to dads or wanting to take their favorite toys and then you know heaven forbid they get home on Sunday night and something they sleep with every night is still at dad's in Tulsa or something. And as easy as we can make it on our kids is what we should do. Mm -hmm. Well, are you the first female to be director of this office? Um, County director? I don't know. Um, When I started in 2000, Randy Burris was our county extension director and he retired, it'll be three years ago in December. And I took over then. But I really think he had I think he had been the county extension director since he started in 93. The girl that was here, the girl, lady that was here in my position before um, I started may have been director before he was in 93 because I think she'd been here since about 90. I'm not sure. From what I understand, it was tough for women to get to be director back Probably. when I first, when I first started, actually 16 years ago. There were not many female county extension directors, and there are probably even fewer. I think maybe when I started, there were two female ag agents, ag educators. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just typically a male role. If um, if you were looking for an ag agent, ag educator, they were all male. And now we have a female ag educator. Muskogee County does, Fusky County does. There are numerous counties. Mm-hmm. Have they been received pretty pretty well by the? It, it kind of depends. The 4-H kids usually love them and the parents are welcome, you know, welcome those new ideas and the, the fresh face and, and things like that. Some of the older cattlemen that know how it's been done for years don't believe a 26-year-old female can tell them how to do anything. So it really <laughs> just depends on audience. <laughs> Some people love them. Some of them not so much, but, you know, all of the ones I knew are doing a great job. So it's just getting in there and, I guess, proving yourself to them. Well, is the, much. the increase in number, or is there, are there fewer men wanting the position? I don't know if it's that or if there's just more females going into mm-hmm. ag fields, mm-hmm. ag careers. Um, I think there are a lot more, you know, I look at our high school FFA here and in Shakotia, the FFA chapters in our county, and there are a lot more females involved, or as many as there are males. And a lot of times there are more females in those leadership roles, those um, officer positions and things like that, that kind of go on into ag related fields. Mm. That's been a change. Yes, it has. Yeah. Yes, it has. Well, kind of similar to veterans, I mean, not veterans, veterinarians. Yes. Mm-hmm. A lot of females now. Definitely a lot more going into those those um, agricultural science related fields. Do you take a group to Roundup each year? We usually do. I was actually supposed to come to Roundup this year, but we had two delegates and they both backed out at the last minute. They were both first timers, um, 13 years old, hadn't been away from home much. And uh, well, actually, I think one of them was already 14, but they had not, not ever been before and they chose about the day before not to go, <laughs> so I did not actually get to come to Roundup this year. You could take them just for a visit. Yes, they would. Well, and one of them has a brother that had gone for, gosh, the last four or five years with me to Roundup, mm-hmm. so I know he really talked it up because he would have a ball, but she we just couldn't convince her to go. Well, any end of the ones that you've taken, have they gone to OSU? Um, a few of them at least. Yeah, yeah. we've got one that's there now. I guess she's a senior, and she was a, an RA in, I don't know which one's the female side, but Kerr Drummond. She was Kerr Drummond 6. I would see it on her Facebook page all the time. She was a resident assistant, and she's a senior now. Okay. She went with us quite a few years, and we have one that just graduated from OSUIT um, with, uh, I 
get you into a computer, something to do with computers, that we took for quite a few years. Uh, over 16 years, you've seen a lot of I've seen a lot, lot of kids. children come through. Yeah, that kind of dates me, but uh, there are people who I took to round up back when I first started who have kids the same age as my younger ones now. So I'm seeing those that have graduated and gotten married and have kids that are the same age as my younger kids now. And I'm like, remember, I took you to Roundup in 2002 and you got in trouble for it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of funny how long you've been in, what all you've seen. Well, have your children been involved with courage? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, my older two have. My my little ones are four and six, so they're not no. old enough now. But my older two are 21 and 18. So, yeah, they were, gosh, county officers pretty much from the time they turned 13 on and very active, went to Roundup, went to summer camps, went to just about everything, showed livestock. and All by choice. Not that you have to. Pretty use. much. They, yeah, I think you just kind of do what you see and do what you know, and that's what my family has always done, you know, and, and I never really pushed them to do anything in particular, but since mom was going every Tuesday night to a 4-H meeting, we might as well tag along. And when I was single for seven years in there, in that in that gap, which was pretty much the time they were able to be in and, and things, it was just natural that they come with me and they got very involved. And we've had lots of um, 4-H projects, lots of Tulsa State Fair projects, mm -hmm. lots of different livestock, and yeah, it's given them really good opportunities. Um, both of them not terribly afraid of public speaking and I credit a lot to 4-H and to FFA. Did the public speaking program through 4-H pretty much straight through all the public speaking competitions and, and things like that. So, But they're in college now and not really afraid to get up and give a presentation, which is something not a lot of people can say. So I, I really think it was a benefit. And are they at, where are they in college? Um, my son is at Northeastern in Tahlequah. He did his first three years at, well, two and a half years at Oklahoma City University, and he transferred back, back to NSU last Christmas. And he's finishing up his degree in history at NSU this year. And my daughter is in the nursing program at Connors, but she lives in Muskogee and goes to the Muskogee Branch campus of Connors State. Well, I wish he doesn't have that so Right. History, though, he could come. He could come, and I tried to talk him into it. Um, his dad is actually a Methodist preacher, and OCU is Methodist-affiliated, and so lots of um, kinship scholarships and lots of money, and he went there and loved it for a year and hated it for two and decided he wanted to be closer to home, and so he came back to NSU. It's a pretty campus. NSU it's is, a beautiful so. campus, and he had lots of friends that went straight out of high school there that he wanted to reconnect with, and so it was kind of a natural fit. Well, he could still go to OSU at some time and get a master's. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, EDD or something. Definitely. Do all of them have a few pieces of orange in their closet? Oh, definitely, yes. Yes, actually, I should have taken a picture of my six-year-old today. He threw a fit to wear his um, football jersey. And I said, son, it's kind of hot. It's pretty thick and heavy. And he said, I'm wearing it, Mom. I'm wearing it. We won Saturday. So we watch lots of OSU football and cheer. We tape it when we're not home, when we're going to one of their soccer games or something. It's We always have an OSU football game on DVR. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually wore his jersey this morning. But, yes, they all they all have lots of orange and black. Could be a member of Pistol Pete's posse. Definitely. That's right, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've been to campus? The, yeah. younger, the, younger, uh, the younger ones? The younger two, I'm trying to remember if we've ever had the six-year-old. The four-year-old hasn't. The six-year-old has been to campus once to a football game. When he was very small, he wouldn't remember it because it was before the four-year-old got here, so he was probably a year old the last time mm -hmm. that we actually got to come to a football game. Well, if you stay in it long enough, you'll get to come with the Oh, definitely. Yeah. They will. They will. <laughs> he can't wait. He's already... Um, actually asked our local principal who um, breeds show hogs. He's already asked him when he can get one. And, and he told him the other night at the football game, if he had some money, he'd just sell him one. And he didn't realize it, but Carson had $10 that he had earned for helping around the house last week. And he said, well, I guess i got to give you a pig for that. So he's ready to show. He's ready to do it. <laughs> 
Well, do you have a place for it? I yeah, mean, yeah, we still have our barn from when the other two showed. Yeah, my daughter just graduated in um, May of this year, so she showed last spring. It's just she's just about six months out of the whole show business. So, so where you live, you have. Okay. We just have, we have 2.8 acres, but we have a small barn and we have three stalls in it where are three separate pens on concrete floor and stuff. We had poured and stuff and, and, you know, we've run hoses and, and got a wash rack down there where it's all real convenient for them right there in the barn. I have to be just so, so done from what I understand. It's amazing to me and I don't understand at all the science of the feeding and the, when you put them on, um dirt floor and when you move them to the concrete so that they'll walk right in the show rings and I don't understand it all thank goodness my husband does and we have lots of good coaches around here but um, yeah it, it's definitely how to work the hair on a show calf and you have to wet them down and blow them out every night and a lot of work but a lot of responsibility and it, it teaches them blow them with a hair dryer yes yeah get that hair to lay right and if it doesn't, couldn't think. Well, it's detrimental in the show ring, and you're you usually have so much money tied up in them, you want to do well. <laughs> you can't spike it, or no. Uh, well, there are certain things it's... you can use on it, and certain things you can't. They'll wipe them down for it shows, and or no nos. Things, mm. certain things that are allowed, and certain things that aren't. So. And then once they go through this, do they sell sell them typically? Or sometimes um, we have what we call a local premium sale, and you don't actually sell your animal. Businesses in the community just support you to help you um, continue your projects. So they may bid five or six hundred dollars on your animal, and you get the check, but you still get to keep the animal. Um, then you usually sell it in the spring after after all of the shows. And then they get to pocket that, or yes. at least part of it. Usually just recoup what they've already got in the animal. <laughs> it's amazing to me sometimes how much it takes to feed. You know, you don't realize that they'll eat four or five, six pounds. Um, and, and I'm talking pigs, since that's what we've recently been showing. Um, I don't even know on a calf now how much they would eat a day, but a 50-pound bag of food may not last you three days. Mm. Three, you know, three or four days, and it's $25 a bag and stuff. Mm. So it, it's terribly expensive. It's an investment. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. It's not really a money-making business. It just teaches responsibility. And if your kids love to do it, it's kind of one of those things. My kids are probably never going to make a million dollars, you know, playing football. But if they want to do it, you make the investment in it. And that's a lot in livestock. You usually don't make money on it. You're lucky if you break even. <laughs> or would they have their own bank accounts to do that? Or yes. it would be mom's? Yeah. It depends on how much they would make at the sale. Um, my dad usually would help them go buy CDs or we would, they do both have, my older two both have savings accounts and they've used a lot of it for college expenses. Um, they were both concurrently enrolled their senior year of high school and took classes at Connors, which the tuition is waived, but none of the fees or books or anything are. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And so they would use some of their premium sale money to pay for the fees and to buy their books and, and gas for commuting and things like that. And roughly how much would, would that be for like a premium bonus you know, it, for one thing? It really depends. It, it depends on how you do in the, in the show. Um, all of your grand champions will bring more than your, um, you know, the fourth place lamb in the sale, the fourth overall. Your grand is going to bring more than, than fourth or fifth place. Um, and it's really gone up in recent years. When, when they first started the show six or seven, eight years ago, you, if you got four or five hundred dollars, you were doing pretty good. It was pretty good, you know, pretty good money. Um, I think my daughter this last year, I, I'm pretty sure her check was for about twenty eight hundred. Yeah. But a lot of it's add on money. The people that bought her, she showed lambs this this year instead of hogs. She wanted to try something different her senior year. Um, her premium bid for her her lamb, which was a breed champion but not a grand. Um, was eleven or twelve hundred, but then with add-on money, grandparents each gave her a hundred dollars, and you know the local Ford dealership gave all the kids a hundred, and the Chevy dealership may have done the same thing and things like that. She ended up getting about twenty eight hundred dollars, which sounds like good money until you figure out you paid eight hundred for the lamb and this much for feed and this much for show supplies, and we about broke even. So well, I guess that's the goal. To break that's the goal. At least to break even. That's the goal is to not lose money. <laughs> well, does she have to learn how to shear? Yes, shear, shear it too? Mm -hmm. she did. She she learned from her ag teacher how to shear her own. So she actually can clip a hog, and she never actually showed calves. And that's one thing she regrets, and I do too. They were just 
kind of out of our price range, you know, 1500 or 2000 for an animal. We were looking more for four, five, six hundred dollar animals. So she showed pigs and sheep. And that led her to be want to want to be a nurse. Um, you know, all through high school, she loves kids, loves little mm -hmm. kids, loves the fact that that I teach and things like that. And she was so set on early childhood or elementary ed that until about six months ago, I just knew that was the way she was going. And I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden she said, you know, I want to be a nurse. I said, well, whatever you want to do, if you'll stick with it, do it. So she actually graduates tomorrow night um, from VOTEC with a phlebotomy certification. And then she's doing some CNA stuff so that she can actually work in her field while she's in nursing school. So I do blood. Oh, she has <laughs> sent me videos that I cannot watch. They actually practice on each other in the class. Um, and it's nothing to get stuck four or five times a night. Um, uh, I'm squeamish. I, I can't watch it. <laughs> I'm glad she can do it. I can't watch it. Well, I mean, working with animals may have helped, oh, her, yeah. helped her with that. Oh, sort yeah. Of thing and too. she's, yeah, she's helped give lots of shots, lots of vaccinations and, and things to her animals. So and it didn't bother her. It didn't seem. Not a, not a veterinarian, but a nurse. Yes. I don't know why, but yeah, that's what she wants to do. I guess for those who grew up on farms, they already have these animals and they don't have they to, do. to go out and buy. A lot of them do. We have a lot of, of county bred and owned animals. A lot of kids in our county livestock show whose grandparents or parents actually breed their animals. They raise their own. So from the, if they win the fair here in Muskoka, McIntosh County, uh -huh. then they go to... They can. There are a lot of other shows. In the spring, there's a district show in Muskogee mm -hmm. that McIntosh County per, uh, participates in. It's um, actually Muskogee Regional Livestock Show. I don't know exactly how many counties participate, but it's a, a cluster of counties, and we go to it. Um, in the fall, we do Tulsa State Fair. Usually, some of our kids go to the State Fair of Oklahoma and actually show in Oklahoma City, too. We have a few that go over into Arkansas and show at Fort Smith at the Arkansas-Oklahoma State Fair. Mm -hmm. Um, those are all in the fall. In the spring, your goal is OYE. Once you show your local and your county, if you go to Muscovy to the regional, then you go on to OYE, Oklahoma Youth Expo, which is the largest livestock show in the world in Oklahoma City. Yeah. It lasts about 12 or 14 days, and there are thousands and thousands of kids and animals through there. And while you're there, you stay at a hotel, or do you have a, a camp? We take a take? travel trailer and stay right there, $25 a night. Um, take a gator or a four-wheeler, um, and you are two or three blocks from your animal. You have to watch, keep, keep check on them. You have to keep check on them nonstop, make sure, you know, they're not too hot, not too cold in those barns, and you have to feed two or three times a day, depending on if you're trying to put weight on them for the show and things like that. So you want to be close. It's just more convenient to be right there with them. A lot more to it than the average person. A lot realizes. more than people would think. <laughs> Lots of feed formulas, and you know we'll have six feed bags open at any time in the barn, and they get one pound of this and a half a pound of that and two pounds of that and half a cup of that and only one tablespoon of of that additive and whatever. And then once you get closer to show, it all changes. Mm. We usually keep a chalkboard in the barn or a dry erase board and current feed formulas written on it so you don't forget what you're supposed to be feeding. And who keeps track of that? The, the, the person that's actually, the student's supposed to? Yes, the ag teacher to. will make recommendations. Um, they, my daughter was an ag um, from the time she was a freshman on. And uh, so the ag teacher will come out once a week and look at, you know, evaluate the animal and check on them and say, you know, we really think we need to cut the fat and put on some more muscle. So we're cutting this to that and adding this and adding this and dry erase it and write the whole new formula on there and start until it comes back again. Well, on the one that you first showed, did you get a, a nice, good premium for your... your I, you family? know, I don't remember there being premiums back then. I don't know how long they've been around. They were before I graduated. But when I first started, you just really showed for the trophies and the recognition. I, there, I don't think there were premium sales until probably I got to high school. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened to yours? Did, did you well, know? actually, my first big seven tall heifer that, that I showed that I was just in love with, her name was Belle. Bella the Ball, and uh, my dad kept her, um, and we raised other show calves off of her. Yeah, so I showed her heifer calves for three or four years after I showed her. Um, 
But yes, I do know what happened to a few of them. We would be having hamburgers and I would realize that it was Henry or someone, you know. Or my, my dad always thought it was hilarious to tell me who we were eating. So, I, I, But I think when you grow up on a farm, it, you, get you know, the shock, it. I kind of went, oh, well, he's pretty good. <laughs> you know, you just, you're used to that kind of thing. And I know, I don't want to say city kids, but other people probably would go, oh my gosh, that's awful that you ate basically your pet well, your food may have been somebody's pet you know so just growing up on a farm does name and name and then come into play there oh definitely everybody has a name everybody has a name that way you know how much feed to give dolly or how much feed to give penny or reba or ruby or but it'd be harder to part with it if it has a name. Depends on their temperament. Oh, we have okay. had some that we have been happy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is hard on some of them that you get really attached to. How, do you have a... Back in the day, I know they had to take it into town and put your... And all that stuff, uh -huh. do they still do mm -hmm. that? I guess, yeah, years? yeah. There's, um, there's actually not any place really close. There's... Um, uh, processing plant over at Stigler, and then we usually use K's at McAllister. They donate a lot to our local kids, and um, so we, we use K's at McAllister a lot for our stuff. That's where my dad takes everything, or always has. Meat lockers used to be in, mm -hmm. in little town, but you follow property that one Yeah, too. that was one of my classes at OSU was actually part of the hotel, the restaurant part of the hotel restaurant was a meat science class, and we had to go through that, and I about fell out when they killed that cow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough class. I didn't think I was going to make it through. We had to try lots of um, different meats, gamey meats, and things things I had not ever eaten, even being from a small community. You know, I hadn't eaten a lot of venison and and um, no elk and no duck and no things like that. And it was an experience. And you had to try. Yeah, we had to try everything. Yeah, I, I could have done it either. But different. <laughs> Still not a big venison or duck or you know kind of either. I prefer my hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> or buffalo. Yeah. Bison, hey, yeah, that's bison, not bad. Bison, I guess. Do they have any of those in this county? Um, they used to. There was actually a place out on Texana Road that raised a lot, and they set up all the time at the at the state fairs and like the Made in Oklahoma building and stuff and show, uh, and sold their bison burgers, and they had beefalo and things like that. But the guy passed away probably been at least six or seven years ago, and I haven't heard of anybody raising any since. Mm. Well, for someone that's just come into McIntosh County for the mm -hmm. first time, are there one or two places they should definitely see? Oh, goodness. I guess it would probably depend on time of year. You know, there's a lot of history around the lake as far as Bell Star and things like that. We have a lot of beautiful campgrounds and campsites. Um, if it's during the summer, just anywhere around the lake, you know, the marina that goes on for miles and miles and miles of boats, it looks like, um, the floating restaurants and things out on, on there, where you can actually sit right out over the water and eat. Um, you know, what's uh, Bell Star? The, the, oh, the, um, the outlaw, Bell Star. Oh, yeah, was she? Yeah, she was, she was hit out around here and was actually, I guess, killed out toward Texana Road, actually killed in this county. Is she buried here? Do you know? Um, rumor is, yes, that's her grave, but I don't know that she's actually in it. You know, you never know back then if they were actually killed in that shootout or whatever, but supposedly, yes, out actually like toward the dam out, um, I guess, east of here. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. Well, is Robert's Cave in this county? Since no, you said you go it's actually in Latimer County. We Excellent. camp with Haskell County. Um, we, we do a dual county 4-H camp. I mean, Oak Mulgee has joined us actually the last two years when we camp at Robert's Cave, but it's actually in Latimer County. Okay. But it's, um, let's see, I guess it's about 20 miles to Quentin from here, 20, 24, and then it's about 20 on to Robert's Cave. So it's not far. It's less than an hour for us to take the kids to. Yeah. All right. And you, as you're... You're just responsible for this county, or do you have another a joint county? No, we're just responsible just for McIntosh. Uh, some corporate extension. Yes, yeah, some of them do dual, dual counties. Yeah, we've got some open positions now, and we've got people covering neighboring counties while a position is open. And with the budget like it is, they've frozen some positions, and they're on hold for six months or eight months or a year. So they're helping cover the the programming needs in other counties. Mm. 
Do you see yourself retiring from this? Probably so. I, I don't see myself doing anything else. They've actually tried to get me to come to the high school and teach facts, family and consumer sciences, twice since I've been here. Um, and I just don't know that I want to be tied to a classroom, and it would be so hard. Here we have flexibility. I can get all my programming done in two or three days, and kind of, if I know my kids have something coming up I need to take a day off for, and up here it's hard to find substitute teachers, and you find your own if you're going to be gone, you know, for the day and stuff. I just, I just think this is a good fit for my family. We'd have to get certified, too. Well, I've gone through all of the testing to be alternatively certified. I've actually taken all of the the tests and, and things to do that. I just haven't done my appeal to the State Board of Education. Mm. That's why they keep poking me. <laughs> I passed all my tests. I just haven't done that last step yet. <laughs> but Never say never, but I don't see myself going that route. I will probably stay right here. I'm very happy with what I do. Well, and in, in this role, too, you can push OSU toward people toward OSU. Yeah, yeah definitely. And a, a lot of our 4 Hers automatically go that route, but some of them are undecided. Um, and being able to visit campus and do some of the, the tours of different colleges and things while we're there, or participating in Vet Science Day or things like that on campus really opens their eyes to, to what a great place it is, that, that it is someplace they want to be. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have a really strong connection to OSU. Oh, yeah. Do you have any explanation for that? Like you know, that I, I don't. Um, I, I, I don't. I couldn't explain it. It's just once you've been there and once your family is involved with it, and it's hard to get away from OSU. I, I, I'm not disappointed in my kids that they didn't go there, but it's. I would have loved for them to. Um, my little ones may end up there, I don't know, but there's just a, a strong bond once you've been there, once your family's been there, and that's the way you grow up. Um, I don't know, the rah, 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 and the going to the football games, and the growing up with season tickets, and being on campus, and the atmosphere, and the family feel, and it just never was a question for me where I was going. <laughs> Would you go to walk around homecoming, yeah. for homecoming? Yes. Before you attended there? Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. We, we went a few times. Yeah, we had season tickets almost the entire time I was growing up because my dad worked for OSU, too. You know, he worked in extension and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, we did a lot of um, a lot of trips to Stillwater. Um, and actually, at one point, he said he was going to buy an old school bus and turn it into, like, a party bus and, you know, where we could stay in it and things like that. But I just, I remember football season and almost every sat every Saturday that there was a home game tailgate and then being there yeah mm -hmm. you know pitching the canopies and bringing out the grills and we knew everybody within a you know three or four block radius of of where our camp was and that's that's just what you did always the same spot yeah typically where was typically. it um best I remember we were not far I'm trying to remember the name of the street this side of the uh West Watkins Center for International Trade Development. Washington. Is yes. There. Yes. Just across Washington from the stadium about a block. Okay. Tailgating is becoming it's huge. Yes. It's huge. I'm sad that, that we don't get to go as much as I would like to now. Um, I see pictures. The girl that does my job in Lincoln County was no issue cheerleader. She and her twin sister. And um, she's got a couple of, of young daughters now that are always decked out in OSU cheerleading uniforms and things like that. And I see her posting pictures of them at every home game day, you know, and I wish I could be there. It's just it's just that kind of feel. And like I said, we've always got the game DVR'd if we're not able to watch it. And my household stops for OSU football. <laughs> It stops. There's no laundry. There's no. We pause for snacks occasionally, but <laughs> it's serious business. <laughs> well, when was the last time you went over deer and to walk around deer and the oh, Gosh, it's I'm been kidding. a long time. Um, it's actually funny. Let's see. How old were my other two? Because we were eating at Panera Bread right there on the corner of Hall of Fame um, by the Cimarron. Probably seven or eight years maybe um, was the last time we were there for any of that. It's, it's been a long time since my two little ones got here. 
Well, in a couple more years, they'll be ready. In a couple more years, they'll be ready for it. Well, they're probably ready now. I mean, they've added so much more for little kids. They have. Jumping. They have. Things and such. Yeah. I, I hope they get to experience that. We actually got an email here last week where 4-H members and their families, and since we're employees, we get it, discount tickets to the game on uh, October 10th. And I am begging my husband to go. <laughs> so it, it would actually be my little one's first game and my six-year-old's only his second game. And he was, like I said, a year old at the first one, so he doesn't remember it. I think just the the mass amount of people and crowd and noise and mm -hmm. they love it, mm -hmm. love it. They love to go to high school football games here. This is actually our homecoming week and we can't wait till Friday night for the parades and the uh, the floats and the the homecoming festivities and the coronation and all of that. They love football games. Oh, they would like that. They yeah. would love it. Just the, the scale compared to you follow high school to that. You know, I think they would get in their mind that we're going to a football game they would imagine you follow high school, and then when you get there and it's this, they would be in awe. A lot of orange. <laughs> yes, a lot lots of orange. orange. A sea of orange. <laughs> That's okay. They own plenty of it. And they probably like the bullet part. Oh, the definitely. Bullet, comes the bullet. Definitely. Mm -hmm. so, and actually, we've had a 4 h -er come through here whose family were all alumni in there, and um, one of them was a spirit writer at one point, a sibling. Um one of the former spirit riders taught here for a while and was married to a local girl. So, and we've got a few OSU connections here. Sounds like. Yeah, I think most of our vets in the in this county are OSU alum. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. too. Teachers, maybe not so much, because there are so many other options right. for that. Right. What's the biggest business in, in you following out? <sighs> Employer, biggest employer. You know, I honestly don't know. Um, Creek Nation employs a lot of people here, but it's at different places. There's a Creek Nation Behavioral Health. There's a Creek Nation Indian Health Facility. There's the Creek Nation Casino and the Creek Nation Community Center, Elderly Mill Site. So they're probably one of the biggest, but not necessarily in one location. Um, the schools, definitely. I mean... Um, other than that, there's not just a whole lot of industry. Um, there was a sewing factory at Shakota for many years, and it's been gone now for probably a dozen years um, that employed a lot of people, but it's no longer there. There's just really not any big businesses. We're mostly small family-owned businesses. Even the car dealerships, you know, might be 20 employees, four or five salesmen, and five or six in the sale or in the service department and a few in the office and things like that. But. The sewing factory, what did they sew? What did they make? Do you, um, you know, I don't really remember. I think a lot of um, undergarments, and for a while there was, and I can almost tell you the name, they did swimsuits. Because I remember they would have, like, factory closeouts or, or things that had a little bit of a flaw there. And they actually had a store front in the factory where you could go and buy things for little or nothing. So. That's kind of neat, too. Yeah. Hmm. And I know just Big Bank, the Foley... Biggest, big, biggest building in town is the Foley. Bank. Yes, I mm -hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, it hasn't been a bank, and I can't even tell you how long it was. You followed jewelers when it was a jewelry store when I, as far back as I can remember, when I was in elementary school and high school. And um, at some point while I was away from here, he went out of business, and it's an insurance agent now. I don't think being so close to I 40 probably helps with travel through. Yeah, a, a lot of people pulling off of 69, especially, going all the way through. I mean, if they come off 40 down 69 to go toward Texas for any reason, we get a lot of business there. That's why we have the big Love's Travel Plaza out there and things that's fairly new. Um, we get people come through, you know, pull off here to eat and things. So when you were in high school, were, you, were there Native American Indians in, oh, mixed in with your... Lots of them. Lots of them. There's actually a... Mentioning Creek Nation, I, I didn't think about the dormitory, but there's a, an actual residential dormitory here where people can send their kids to stay during the week, and they get tutoring help, and they actually have dorm rooms here, and, and they send them to the Ufala Public Schools, but then they go back there at night and have um, house moms and things like that. They still do that? I mean, it's current. They run the buses on Friday afternoon, take them home, and then they pick them back up Sunday evening at the same spot. Oh. 
So they're in residence here all week and go to Uvala Public School, so we have a high Native American population. I don't know how many kids they have at the dorm currently, but at any given time, you know, they may have 100, 100 150, 200 kids in residence. And now some of them go through your 4-H? Um, not usually because we have a lot of evening 4-H meetings and things and they're required to be back there and in study time. They have very, from what I understand, regimented schedules. They have tutoring at a certain time and dinner at a certain time and activities and things like that. So they usually don't bring them out in the evenings for 4-H meetings. I wonder, is that the only one in the state that's like... Um, oh, Jones I Academy, know. I think, at Hartshorn is still an in-residence. I'll have to do some work. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting to find out. It's very interesting about. to go up and see how they do things. We've done some programs, some extension programs at the dorm. Um, we've done some health and, and nutrition things with some of them after school. We went in one year. I can't tell you how long ago. It's been eight or nine years. But we went in every Monday during the entire school year and did physical activity and did some... Um, it was mainly for overall health, did some peer pressure counseling type things and tobacco prevention and just all, it was called the Health Rocks curriculum, but it was overall health, um, mental health and physical health and, and emotional, some, some emotional support type health for those kids who maybe didn't have real close family ties. But it's very interesting to see those kids away from their families and things. Was it boys and girls? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is going. I wonder, have we had, I had interviewed a 100-year-old that grew up in New Uh-huh. And she talked about it just for girls. That was a school, I believe it school used to be. Girls. It was a boarding school um, up close to where, and I'm not even sure if the building may still be there, where the Indian Health Clinic is now. Um, but it was still there not too many years ago. And it was it was just a residence home for girls at boarding school. She was talked about walking around it. Uh-huh. It's at the end of a sub street, that's all I remember. Yeah, yeah it's actually co-ed and has been for as long as I can remember. Um, it was when I was in high school. Well, the casino probably brings in some extra funds to the probably, county. Probably. It's not real conveniently located. I think if there's an easy way to get off of Highway 69 to it, you have to come all the way through town and up a little side street. It's actually kind of hard to find, but it does bring in some extra business. I mean, people who know their casinos. Is there oil and gas going on? around here as much as it in the rest of the state? A little bit, not, not as, as much. much. Yeah, it, not as much, you know, as it was for Our a while. Are we? Not much. Color. Not much around here. So mostly water. Yeah, mostly water. And mostly beautiful. tourism. Mostly yeah. tourism. Um, you know, people tease around here that you have to make your living from about April to October and you follow. Um, we're kind of a ghost town. A lot of businesses are open from the 1st of May until after Labor Day um, or Memorial Day to Labor Day. Some of the restaurants are Jellystone Park where they have cabins and RV sites and swimming pool and lake activities and putt-putt and things like that. Um, they opened, this year they opened the weekend, actually they opened early the weekend before Memorial Day and then Labor Day Monday was their last day and they shut down and they own another business in Florida and they go there for the winter and was 90 something degree weather they could still be they could still be here yes i saw a facebook friend and i don't even remember which one it was that it posted this morning well had one final dip in the pool last night you know most people don't do that in the september but it's plenty warm for it <laughs> yes heat index was something yesterday it was hot well does it get that is that hot here too yes it's hot the and, and the water? sticky yes mm. yes it does so, you've, you've lived a couple of places. Where do you consider home? Here. You follow? Yeah. Yeah. I started kindergarten here. I actually went to a head start in daycare here, and I graduated from high school here. And, you know, as much as I think most small town, not all, but a lot of small town kids think I'm getting out of here as soon as I graduate and I'm never coming back. And there were people like that in my graduating class that haven't really ever come back. Um, I wanted to get out and see the world for about that long, and then I was ready to be home. When I had kids, I knew I wanted them to be close to grandparents, and I wanted what I had growing up, uh, having Sunday dinner at grandparents' house, and if I needed to run some errands and wanted to do it without them, I could drop them off at Nana's house, you know, for a couple of hours, and even Tulsa was a little far for me to just, especially with working, only getting to see my parents and my kids see their grandparents one weekend a month maybe it, it's not enough time to build a real bond and 
I guess I'm very family oriented. I'm not cut the umbilical cord. I still see my mom three times a week, you know, so that it was just a natural fit to move back. So who does the Sunday dinner now? Um, it just depends. We rotate. It depends on how busy we are. Um, my stepmom, they live about, you know, 26 miles or so down around Quentin, but she is always up to cook, and she is an unbelievable cook. She kind of took over when my grandmother passed away, my dad's mom. She had always done Sunday dinner. Um, but my, my stepmom does it a lot now. We go down at least every other Sunday, usually to their house. My mom may do it one Sunday in between, and I may host one Sunday. My husband is a barbecue fanatic and just spent, I probably don't even want to know how much he spent on a new smoker. So he'll get up sometimes on a Saturday and smoke all day and we'll have ribs and brisket and whatever. He, he'll do a lot of the cooking. Sign me up. He is, he is <laughs> excellent. He, he does barbecue competitions and he's oh. actually trying to talk me into a $20,000 food truck concession trailer right now. And I'm holding him off as long as I can. <laughs> I don't know how long I can. He absolutely loves it. So, I mean, it's interesting that that tradition is still carrying on. Mm -hmm. That Sunday dinner is mm -hmm. somewhere with we the usually, in the family. Actually, um, this Sunday, we've already made plans. Everyone is going out to eat. It's all you can eat shrimp at Red Lobster. And my two little ones, I think, could eat their weight in shrimp. It is their favorite food. So, this Sunday, Red Lobster is hosting dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that's just on rare occasion though. Yeah, yeah, restaurants yeah. typically at yeah. someone's house. Yeah, a lot of times we'll get together and go out to a big breakfast if somebody has something to do on Sunday, or if my husband has to go into work or something. We'll get up and have breakfast at nine o'clock or something together, and that's our big Christmas tradition. Um, since my older kids would have to leave on Christmas Eve night and go to their dad's to have Christmas Day with him since our divorce, on Christmas Eve morning, we do huge, huge family breakfast and then open our gifts by noon or so. That way my kids have the rest of that day to play with their toys before they had to leave to go to their dad's. So lots of times we have big breakfasts instead of dinners. You still do that? Yeah. Oh, that's me too. Yeah. My mom makes the best chocolate gravy in the world. So I make the regular gravy. She makes the chocolate gravy. It's actually chocolate, though. Oh, yeah. It's like melted fudge over biscuits. It's wonderful. <laughs> I've never had it. Have you never had chocolate gravy? No. It's wonderful. Um, you know, and I won't even say nutrition-wise how much sausage and bacon we eat, but it's probably at least a couple of pounds of each. You know? <laughs> protein. That's right. <laughs> Lots of fat and a little bit of protein. <laughs> well, the chocolate gravy, do you use milk, you know, like Hershey chocolate, or do you use no, cocoa? No, use cocoa powder, it's sugar, cocoa. stick of butter, a little bit of milk. And over regular biscuit. Do you regular breakfast biscuits? Or honey butter biscuits are really the best. Oh, no, that sounds better too. <laughs> well, it's one thing we know how to do down here is eat. <laughs> Is her recipe written down somewhere? Probably somewhere. It's kind of just passed down, and I couldn't even tell you. I think it's a cup or a cup and a half of white sugar and a stick of butter and six tablespoons of, of cocoa powder and then just enough milk for however thick and rich you want it. Probably four or five cups of milk. Hmm. All right. Yeah. You'll have to try it. I'll have to try it. <laughs> Anybody in the family good at making pies? Um, you know, my stepmother is excellent at, at pies, and I think it's because she learned from my dad's mom, that grandmother, um, before she passed away. There for a while, I was really all into these pampered chef things, and I had the pie rollers and the dough mats, and I was perfecting my pie crust, and that lasted for about six or eight months, I was like, oh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I'll stick to cookies or something a little bit easier, but she's she's a wonderful pie maker. She usually sends everybody in the family a text message before any big meal if she's hosting Sunday dinner or if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or a birthday or something, and she takes uh, dessert requests, and it's always usually coconut or chocolate pie. Mm -hmm. I wondered, are there homemaker clubs still in the, in the county? How many do you have? Well... Actually, it's funny that you should ask. Um, our groups had kind of all disbanded. When I started, we had one group left, and they had 12 members. Um, they kind of quit about 2005. I started in 2000, about 2005 or six. Our president passed away, and a couple more members had passed away. We're down to seven or eight members, and they just kind of didn't want to do it anymore. So I went a couple of years without members, and we recruited a, a club here in Eufaula. Um, had a president that was a real go-getter and recruited some, and we were back up to 10 or 12 members, totally different members. Um, and then she passed away, mm -hmm. and it kind of fell apart on me again. And I actually haven't had members for three years until this past year. 
And we started some really fun stuff, some recruitment, kind of a spin on the Tipsy Artist wine and palette, but it's called Cowboy Canvases. Um, and it's really rich, decadent desserts and punches and crock pot hot cocoa and things like that. Um, and you can only come if you're a member. Um, and I am up to 86 members now, I think. 86? My gosh. We had a meeting last night, and we had 63 at our meeting last night. We painted the pumpkins you've seen scattered around the office here. Um, we did a lesson on 101 things to do with the cake mix, and we had cake mix cookies and cake batter fudge, and we had devil's food and red velvet waffles, and they love it. Oh, age range, what would they be? I mean, what's your youngest and your oldest? Oh, my youngest is 10. And I'm trying to think of who the oldest would be. Probably Betty, if I would say mid 80s, probably. Oh, I mean, so. Yeah. Medium mostly or what in her retirement age? No, actually, our biggest age range right now is probably that 23 to 35 or 40. Hmm. We do a lot of programming on quick and easy meals for families. Um, ways to use your crock pot, ways to um, freeze your meals and budgeting your food dollars and things that they're interested in because they are busy families. Well, centered around food. Yes, a, a lot, lot of it, of it. Yeah, a lot of it around food and, and saving families money. And, it was, and the club is called what? Cowboy? We're just, we're, oh, well, the, the paintings that we do is called Cowboy Canvases mm -hmm. and we do it five times a year. Um, the other seven months, we do regular lessons like we did last night, the $5 craft with them. And they're required to come to the educational lesson to stay for the craft. But it's kind of like mom's night out kind of thing. And we snack and we laugh and somebody will get up and tell a joke. And, you know, in, in the typical county, they're more divided by usually community. There will be a Shakota group and a Ufala group and maybe a Hannah group as far as McIntosh County goes. But they all just want to get together. Let's just do it all together. That place will seat 80 or 90. They just want to all get together. Visit with people from other areas of the county that they may not see real often. And so we just have one huge group. So you need to name it. Does it have a name yet? We're just McIntosh County OHCE. Okay. We used to be Lake Eufaula. Um, but they thought that was kind of negative towards Shakota and Stidham and the outlying areas. So right now we're just all McIntosh County. Max. Yep. I mean, then we need to come up with something clever. Yeah. We have one 4-H club. This is the Lucky 4-H club since it's a four-leaf clover. Um, everybody else is just community-based. Hannah 4-H and Shakota 4-H and things like that. But we could come up with a clever name probably. Yeah. Make it a contest. Yeah. 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 The winner gets the cake. That's right. Well, <laughs> if you give them anything free, they're happy with it. We had drawings last night for... Um, a free $5 craft. Your craft is paid for for tonight, and those ladies get competitive. Draw my name, draw my name for a $5 craft. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it sounds you, like you found your right, your right niche. Well, the right niche. we're just having a good time right now. We'll have to get a little more serious. We do we do make it all educational, but we try to have some fun doing it, too. So a, a reason for them to come and... Um, Sometimes they just need to get away from the husbands and kids or from whatever's stressing them from the day, their job. and So it's a real light mood. We usually have some music playing softly while they're painting or doing their craft and lots of really good food. So That's community. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's getting together and just talking to people who are like you, who may have some of the same issues. You know, we've had young mothers talk to each other about breastfeeding and breaking kids from bottles, potty training and things like that. And then we've had some older ones, you know, that are, have had a common bond with some kind of health issue or um, something some of their family members were going through health wise and things like that. So it's just camaraderie. It is. I bet everybody or most people in town our county know who you are. Um, or at least who you follow, I would think. You know, they I, I, now they do, I think. We're a lot more well-known than we were. Uh, you know, we, we used to tease that we were the county's best-kept secret. Um, people would say, who do you work for? And I'd tell them, they're like, oh, I don't know what that is. What do you do? You know, you tell me, you say, oh, okay, yeah. I remember my kids coming home and talking about those character critters or that nutrition program or something. I didn't know that was you. But... Now that I've been here so long and we've had things in the paper and people have seen me at the fair and out promoting it and things like that, yeah, I'm a little little more well-known. 
Is the fair pretty well attended still? It just depends. Certain parts of it are. Um, Pam, our new ag agent that started two years ago, she has started a lot of, of new things along with, it used to be livestock show here, and certain people went to it, and then indoor exhibits over here, and it was mostly families of those who entered quilts or canning or, or um, arts and crafts projects that just came to see their kids' stuff. Not a lot of community participation, really. So the last two years, we've got some new things going that we've actually had some community participation in. We have um, uh, little wrangler contests it's for the cutest little cowpoke and cowgirl in McIntosh County. We have pie baking contests for both youth and adults, single crust and double crust. We have a biggest bubble contest to see who can blow the biggest bubble in McIntosh County. Um, craziest pigtails, app bobbing. Um, the McIntosh County has talent, talent show in the afternoon. And so those are things that you don't have to be livestock focused or have an exhibit to come out to do. You have to be creative. Yes. <laughs> and we had some pretty creative things this time. Yeah. Halloween costumes coming up. Mm -hmm. On Oh, and we do have Best Dressed Pet. So we did have a weenie dog dressed like <laughs> Superman. And we actually had a goat with a tutu up on it. Just... <laughs> So fun stuff going on in that. It is. Country. It's it's every day's an adventure. <laughs> well, is there a particular food that's known that the many people want to say? Chicken fried steak. Yeah. And catfish also. because we're close to the lake. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have fish fries. That's huge around here. You know, a lot of families. Barbecue is big. Barbecue is big too. Um, Restaurant-wise, probably chicken fried steak or catfish. Everybody has all you can eat catfish on Friday night. Every restaurant around. Um, Have hush puppies to go. Yep. Hush puppies and French fries. You just fry everything. Fried okra, fried squash. Throw it in the deep fryer all together and you've got your meal. <laughs> um, not sure how healthy it is, but that's what we do. <laughs> but probably catfish because every restaurant around here has it. Probably known for chicken fried steak. Most of the restaurants around here have a pretty decent chicken fried steak. Um... People have fish fries for their family reunions and things a lot around here because there's so many people that fish. And then they catch the mm -hmm. catch it in the mm -hmm. local in the local lake. That's right. Yeah. Catfish That's right. too, I guess. Catfish, um, sand bass, crappie, lots of crappie around here. Do it. a lot of people do noodling? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if that would be lake necessarily. Would it? Yeah. it anywhere oh. they'll noodle anywhere. Um, we actually. They're actually probably over in Pittsburgh County, but down toward Canadian, there have been a couple of the big ones that have been on the Hillbilly Hand Fishing TV show and things like that. They've, been, they've actually been on TV for their noodling live you know, eight or ten miles from here. Not me. <laughs> I have no desire to try that. My husband would love to. I have no desire. <laughs> no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've covered a lot. Is there anything that we, we that we haven't that you want to discuss? Not that I we... can think of, really. I typically ask my last question, and it's usually to have people tell me how they would like to be remembered. You know, there are a lot of things I would like to be remembered for. I, um, I think being a good person, helping people, that's kind of why I do what I do. That's one reason the co-parenting curriculum is so important to me and you'll make me cry. Um, we do a lot of stuff with hunger. I'm involved in the backpack program. We have 67 kids that you follow right now. We don't have enough to eat. And so anytime I can be an advocate for how to stretch your food dollar or how to help your kids have a better life, that's why I do what I do. I'm sorry. I can't talk about kids going through things and being hungry or their parents divorcing and the kind of confusion they have without crying. Well, hunger, I mean, do you know what the cop, what? Um, I know we have 67 kids in New Follow right now and we've had as many as 80 on the backpack program mm -hmm. where they send 10 to 12 items home with them on the weekends and, you know, more on, on, holidays and when they're gone for a week or two at a time. Um, there are a lot of really poor people in, in McIntosh County. We're one of the poorest counties, I think. Um, I don't really know why. Maybe because of the tourist? Probably. And, the and people getting, getting laid off in the, in the winter and not having, not getting as many hours 
um, you know, restaurants slow down, some of them close, hotel businesses slow down, mm -hmm. any kind of lodging or marina-based things, our marina closes down after Labor Day. Um, I don't really know what the answer is, but okay. I just, it, it just breaks my heart. And you help how you can. Yeah. We are such a nation of excess, and I see people like these, forgive me, NFL athletes that just don't seem to care with what they make when you've got kids going hungry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just can't stand it. You know, to see my own kids come home and know that probably someone in their class is one of those kids. Mm -hmm. Share your lunch. Yeah. That's right. I grew up sharing mine. There were yeah. several in my class that you knew. I always send extra snacks. You know, they have a snack calendar, and one kid's in charge of snacks each day of the month or whatever, and I make sure that if if one of the teachers thinks that three or four extra snacks needs to be put in somebody's backpack, that it's there for them. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> That's Cowboys. I wish you have a heart, so. Definitely. <laughs> And yours is orange, so. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, especially on camera. I may strike this from your transcript, but um, we were watching the OU game this weekend, and my six-year-old said, now is that the ones we don't cheer for? <laughs> That's the ones, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's them. <laughs> don't cheer for them. <laughs> so... My dad's favorite t-shirt says, um, my two favorite teams are OSU and whoever's playing OU this weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's just my family. <laughs> you're not the first one to, to, nope. say, to say that either. So, or on tape. So you're, yeah. you're good. Okay. You're good. <laughs> well, we'll end with saying go Pokes. Yeah, absolutely. Go Pokes. And mm -hmm. thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for great. coming.